the stone and wood. And the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. First Kings 18, 37 and 38. Somebody shout, God's thirsty. He's thirsty to give his bride. But then the fire fell again. God give us a now, then the fire fell. For your God to consume in fire, Hebrews 12, 29. If you're to have his fire, you got to let him have all. His fire only comes to consume. His fire don't come to condone. It comes to consume. And friend, fire licked up the water. That means the fire is a person. He licked up the water. Let him lick up the water, Lord. The Holy Ghost come to lick up the wet. Send your fire just to condone. You send it always to consume. So, Lord, when we become willing to crawl upon the altar of sacrifice and say, God, I die to me, take all of me, Lord, then and only then will your fire fall. Hallelujah. Lord, make us flammable today. As you said in Job 5 and 7. Lord, I understand Job thought his book in the Bible. Job knew even way, way back then. Job 5 and 7, he said, as sparks fly up, so is man born into trouble. Lord, I ain't talking about the born into trouble right now. We could go on that, but Job said that he rises. That's what he was telling us, as sparks fly up. Jesus, when you come back, you're not coming back for a lukewarm Amen. girlfriend. Amen. You're not coming back for a cold used to be bride. Yeah, God. You're coming back for a hot bride. Because only heat rises. That's right. Only those that are hot will be rapture ready when you come. In Jesus name make us hot Lord. Somebody lift your hand and say Lord make me hot. You know in the book you know in the book of Exodus chapter 12 during the first Passover that was instituted which was a foreshadow ultimately of Jesus because Christ our Passover was sacrificed for us. 1 Corinthians 5, 7. It was all a foreshadowed type of Christ. He is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. John chapter 1, verse 19. John the Baptist said that. Hallelujah. Amen. But in Exodus 12, we find the first Passover instituted in the Bible. said in verse 7, God told them there to take a selected lamb, the firstling of their flock, their best, and they were to offer it to God. And they were to take the blood of that lamb to put it on the lentils of the doorposts of the house because... Judgment was about to pass through the land of right. Egypt. Yes. Death was about to come. And wherever the blood was applied, Exodus 12, 13, God says death would pass over. That's where it comes from, Passover. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And that's what happened when they applied the blood. Now look, God also told them in verses 8 and 9, he said, I want you to roast the lamb with fire. Right. And I want you to eat all of it and leave nothing of it until morning, verse 10. Somebody say, roast the lamb with fire. Now, when you go to your favorite restaurant 
you know, and you've ordered you a selected piece of meat, whether you order it medium rare or whether you order it well done, you still want it hot. If you was ordering you some lamb chops, you wouldn't want to eat no cold lamb chops. Come on, you want a cold cut, you'd have been making you a sandwich. But you paying some money and you want that stuff sizzling. You want to see it smoking when it come out. Anybody here, Holy Ghost? And when I read that, that, that one day, it read back to me. God said, Marvin, I want my lamb to be served hot. God wants his lamb to be served on fire. He's too worthy to be tried to be served cold. And I'm afraid he's being served up on cold Sunday platters everywhere. But somebody shout this morning, we've come to serve him hot. He wants to put the sizzle back in some of you. Look at your neighbor and say, it's going to get hot where I'm sitting. Look at him and say, my sizzle has already begun. Who is this coming out of the wilderness like pillars of smoke with mirth and frankincense and all the powders of a merchant? So in Solomon 3 and 6, somebody shout, I've been in a wilderness so I can get on fire. Somebody shout, and that's how we get out of the wilderness. We get on fire. We don't turn back when we're in wildernesses. When we're in deserts, we realize we're there to get on fire. Brother Mormon, it's killing me in this wilderness. Good, dead stuff becomes flammable. <laughs> you cut down that green bush, you pour kerosene, gasoline. Don't matter, it'll just pop and crack and hang and it don't burn. Oh, but you let it sit in the sun for a week or a week and a half. It dead and it dries up. My God, you go out there with a little spark. That's twice I've said sparks and sparks this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Louis your neighbor say we all know something about fire we in sparks yeah. <laughs> hallelujah yeah. dead stuff catches on fire yeah. Sir, Thank you. Yeah. well Martin how come it seems like Holy Ghost just, just tips to, tip toes to a place and they just are blazing all of a sudden how come they always that person there that just seems like they just <laughs> <laughs> Somebody shout, they know how to die. That's what dead stuff does when his fire comes. That's why God takes us through the wilderness, takes us through the deserts and the bad places and the hard times so he can get that in us that's alive, not under him, but that's alive apart from him so he can kill it, so he can die, so we can get on fire. You show me somebody on fire, you'll show me somebody that's died a thousand deaths. I ain't talking about physically. I'm talking about to their carnality, to their will. Come on, somebody. To the need for vain glory and pats on the back. You heard me tell you about dead people last night in that church, I said. On during Halloween, they was talking about spooky man. When they saw me walking out of that graveyard, I've been out there praying because I still want them preachers to believe you pray before you preach. Right. And that's the only place I can get along at. And they were oh, scared to death when I was coming back to them. Like, oh, 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 spooky, spooky. I said, ain't nobody out there bothering me. They all dead. They don't care. I said, I've been preaching to them. I've been preaching to them stuff. I'm going to preach to y'all tonight. And didn't none get offended. I said, but some of y'all going to walk out on me when I preach. <laughs> Dead people don't get offended. Yeah, that's right. Brother, I ain't going back to church no more. Sister uh, Sam Paper and Brother Bucket Mouth have offended me. You still too alive because Chip's still on your shoulder. But if you ever get Christ in your heart where he needs to be, they want nobody to keep you from God's presence. I had a preacher attacking me last night on social media before I could get to the house. I'm used to it. <laughs> He was attacking me for being prophet and attacking the name of the church. And he weren't attacking nothing that was in the video that offended him. I said, Holy Ghost, what you want me to do about this? He said, delete it. I said, okay, well, not the video. I deleted the man. Because they sometimes I'll converse back with them. Not debate now, but 
uh, converse back with them. And uh, I remember one guy one time, he, he did that to me. And, and uh, it didn't matter what you say, you know, some, some people are not wanting to actually ask you questions. Hello, they're not really, though they're asking, yeah. they're not trying to ask you, they're just trying to give you their answer in spite of whatever it is you're saying, and they've already got fixed in their mind. They're not trying to ask you a question because they want to learn something. Yeah. Right. They're just trying to burn you. They're trying, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hallelujah. And uh, <laughs> one guy not long ago, I just quoted Matthew 7 and, and uh, 6, and I said, Jesus told me not to cast my pearl before the swine. I said, so... Uh, I'm tired of you biting back. That's all pigs do, you know. Pigs love slop. They don't. They don't really like yeah. truth. They like slop. I said so. So uh, last words to, to you from me is suey. My shop, we went from roast lamb to roast pig right there. Put <laughs> that pig. Hallelujah. But thank God for his presence this morning and what he's about to do. I want you to take your Bibles. Y'all thought I was going to say briefly. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. And turn over to the book of Genesis. Somebody say the beginning. Turn over to Genesis 8 just a moment. We're going to look what Noah did in a time of judgment. I heard this weeks ago as I prayed about this revival. And though there has some things come out of my spirit that uh, I had planned each night to preach in this revival, uh, nothing I've preached thus far has been anything I, <laughs> I really thought. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. So, but I was hearing something here. Hallelujah. Seeing that we're in a revival of release. And each night has been a release of some passion, some some facet hallelujah so genesis chapter 8 in verses 8 let's go back to verse 6 genesis 8 verse 6 it says and it came to pass at the end of 40 days that noah opened the window of the ark which he had made now the ark only had one window can you imagine being on an ark for 40 days <laughs> with two of each kind of every animal Somebody shout, them animals didn't stop eating in 40 days. The animals weren't on a 40-day fast. He collected food likewise for the animals to eat. And how many you know animals eating are also animals you know it? Somebody shout, that had to be a stinking place. And after 40 days, you opened the window. <laughs> Let in the sweet Man in air to breeze right. blow in. Verse 7 and 7, he sent forth a raven, which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. That said, that raven went forth to and fro. And the raven's kind of a dirty bird. Mm Hello, -hmm. eat anything. Hallelujah. And he let it go forth. Never said it really come back. He just said it went back to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Verses 8, also he sent forth a dove. Somebody say he released a dove. Yeah. From him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. So he released this dove, and the dove would fly around. And if there was somewhere for the dove to light, the dove would stay gone. But if he couldn't find anywhere to rest, he would come back to the only dry place he knew, and that would be the ark. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot. She returned unto him into the ark, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. Then he put forth his hand and took her. Somebody shout, he released her, and he received her. He's released her, she's come back to him, and he's receiving the dove. He's releasing and receiving the dove and pulled her in unto him into the ark. Verse 10, and he stayed yet another seven days. Each time he'd send out the dove, the dove would come back, and the dove would stay in the ark for seven days. Fourteen days is now passed, and the dove came into him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf. This is where we get the image of the dove with the olive leaf, which is a representation, a revelation of peace. So Noah knew that the waters were abated from off the earth. Amen. But the dove didn't like. She came back. 
Hallelujah. And stayed yet another seven days, sent forth the dove, which returned not again unto him any more. So the dove found dry ground. And that's how Noah knew the waters were abating. Amen. And there was dry ground 21 days. He were on the 21th day of the first month. Uh, uh, month of this year called 2018 and I didn't even know that until this morning actually about 21 days and this was in my spirit uh, somebody shout uh, it's time to release the dove it's time to release the dove he released the raven somebody shout we need to release some ravens too the raven's that old dirty bird. They ain't one scripture about that raven. Hallelujah. It went to and fro. It never came back. Come on, somebody. Somebody shout the days. Amen. Of going to and fro and never coming back to God and never walking after God, never coming after God, never coming back to the house of God has got to come to a close. Somebody shout, you need to let the dirt go. You need to let the spirits, the foul things go. Anybody here, Holy Ghost, somebody shout, let all the foul foul birds go. Let all the foul spirits go. Let all the foul stuff go. Anybody here, Holy Ghost? Yeah. And he said when we do, then only then can we release the dove. Oh, yeah. The dove. Now who's the dove? The dove's Holy Ghost. Because the Bible said in Luke 3 verse 21 and verse 22, amen, and when they were being baptized and Jesus also being baptized and praying, the Bible said the heavens opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in a bodily shape like as of a dove. Hallelujah. And the Father spake from that open heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Jesus hadn't preached one message. He hadn't taught one sermon. He hadn't cast out one devil. He hadn't healed one sick body. He had not saved a soul at this point. His ministry was just beginning at 30 years of age. Amen. As John was baptizing him in the muddy river Jordan, not because he needed to be baptized, but they might fulfill righteousness. And that's an example for us to follow. Because 1 Peter 2.22 said he did no sin. Therefore, he didn't need to be baptized. But he said, I'm doing it as an example that we might fulfill all righteousness. So suffer me, John. Allow me. And he was baptized in the water. Somebody shout, there's the ceremony. But he was praying. Jesus was not a ceremonial Christ. He didn't come to start a religion. He came to start a relationship with the Father. Though he was doing the ceremonial thing, he was being baptized. Yet the Bible said, and praying. Somebody shout, and praying. He weren't just having church. He was and praying. There's some people that can form a choir, amen, and still not form a relationship with Christ. They're good at doing church, but they're not good at doing Jesus, doing Christ. You can preach about somebody you never talk to. You can praise and worship somebody you never spend time with. Jesus taught us it's more about just ceremonies and orders of service. It's about praying. It's about having a relationship with God. And while he prayed, the heavens opened. Somebody shout, he was praying and obeying. He wasn't just praying, he was obeying. He was following what his father said for him to do at that river that day. Let John baptize you. There's obedience. And praying. Somebody shout your prayers are powerless if you're not doing what God says to you. Proverbs chapter 29 verses 8 said, If you turn away your ear from hearing the truth, even your prayer becomes an abomination. Somebody shout a prayer abomination. How can your prayer... Now I know we know about different things that are abominations. Come on, if a man lays with a man as he does a woman, it's an abomination. Come on, Leviticus 18, 22. We know about abominable things and abominations that, that we would refer as wicked. But God says equally, likewise to me who's holy. If you're praying to me and you're not doing what I've commanded you to do, somebody shout likewise, it's an abomination. Hallelujah. How in the world can somebody call it on Jesus be a man committing an abomination if you're hearing his word and not mixing your faith with what you've heard hallelujah it will profit you nothing Hebrews 4 verses 1 hallelujah. hallelujah so Jesus weren't just being baptized the Bible said he was praying but equally he was obeying and praying because his father wanted him to be baptized to fulfill righteousness 
to fulfill the word of God. Hallelujah. As an example for us, we follow him. Yeah. And the Bible said, when that heaven opened, Luke 3, 21 and 22, the Holy Ghost came forth in a bodily shape. Somebody say bodily shape, like as a dove. In other words, he appeared in the form of the body shape style of a dove. Now it didn't say Holy Ghost was dove, just said when he came, that's what the people recorded. And this was an educated man account of the story. This was Luke the beloved physician that Colossians 4 14 calls him. He's given the record here. Somebody shout an educated man. Okay? I'm not just talking about somebody from a stick somewhere. I'm talking about this man was educated and he said all I can tell you I was there and I, here's the description thereof. Hallelujah. Only way I can tell you hey man, what I saw looked like a dove lighting on him. It came on him. Somebody shout, that's where the dove always comes. He comes wherever Jesus is. He comes wherever those that are calling on Jesus is at. The dove don't come down to give me a ministry for me, from me, about me, so I can tell my story. No, the Holy Ghost comes on me if he does me, or on you if he comes on you, for us to tell the story of his glory. Jesus, come on somebody, the Christ, and exalt him, and lift him up. Jesus said about the Holy Ghost in John 16, Verse 14, when he, Holy Ghost, when he comes, he's going to glorify me. Somebody say, when Holy Ghost comes, he's going to glorify Jesus. Somebody shout, that's the quickest way to get the Holy Ghost to come where you are. And manifest in the midst of where you're at. Start glorifying Jesus. Is verse 13 of John 16 said, He'll not speak of himself, but that which he hears, that shall he speak. When the Holy Ghost comes on a clay vessel, that clay vessel won't be telling their story, always talking about me, mine, and I. When Holy Ghost comes on you, he anoints you for one purpose, one fame, one glory. Amen. And that's to exalt Jesus and to magnify him and bring him glory. So you can't glorify Jesus in the dove. Not come. Look at your neighbor. Say, you didn't know it was dove season. <laughs> Doves want to come down. But he only comes down to rest where Jesus is lifted up. Where Jesus is glorified. And when the dove came down on Jesus, the Father's voice was discerned. They heard it. Somebody shouts, you can't hear the voice of the Father without the dove coming down. The dove's the only one that can give you an audience with him. Wherefore today, if you'll hear the voice of the Holy Ghost, Hebrews 3, 7, Holy Ghost is God's voice. And this voice was heard. And this voice said, this is my beloved son. Listen, in whom I will please. Jesus had to preach one message, taught one sermon, cast out one devil, healed one sick body, raised one dead body, saved one soul. But the Father said, I'm pleased. God ain't pleased because I've preached a hundred messages. Because I passed that long years ago. <laughs> I don't know how many. I don't count numbers in churches and I don't count how many times I've preached either. Come on, I can't hang you count what God does. If I do any counting, I'm just counting on God. Come on, he did not count. Amen, what if you can't, my God, how can you count what Holy Ghost is doing? How can you number that? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I'm telling you, what pleases him is when we let the dove come down. Yeah. When we let the dove release. And I'm telling you, my friend, 18, you watch and see, is going to be a year of judgment. In Noah's day, this was judgment. But Noah knew how to release the dove in a time of judgment. That's the title of this message this morning. Releasing the dove in a time of judgment. Yes. 
Can I preach to you for just a moment? Because the dove's got a plan even in the midst of judgment. Matthew 12, the Bible said in verses 20, Hallelujah, he said, Until I send forth victory unto judgment. Somebody say victory under judgment. That may be verse 21. Hallelujah. Victory under judgment. Somebody say victory under judgment. Sometimes to bring victory, God has to bring judgment. God spoke to me last night as that one attacked me on social media which was with, with, with a word, with warning that I gave prior to posting it. Hallelujah. And God told me to delete it and I went to pray for him and the Holy Ghost said don't pray. My judgment's already began. Sometimes God has to bring judgment in a person's life. Come on, somebody, for them to experience victory over the bondage they're in that they've been blinded to. Judgment's not a bad thing. If you look in your life, you didn't get sincere and serious with God. You didn't say game over to the God games you played with religion. Hallelujah, sitting at tables of devils, thinking you could sit at his table, drinking the cup of demons, and thinking you could have his cup and get your double-minded mind delivered and become single to God until stuff started erupting in your life and stuff started going downward spiraling quick. I didn't get right with God when everything was right. I got right when everything was going wrong for it was then that I realized my wrong. Somebody ought to lift your hands and give him a judgment praise. There's some he'll turn over Satan to Satan. That's right. That he might save their soul. That's right. Your Holy Ghost. Somebody say from victory to judge or from judgment to victory. Until victory come or until judgment comes forth to victory. That's what Holy Ghost Amen does sometimes. And here we see in a season of judgment, Noah is releasing and receiving the dove. Yeah. Hallelujah. He released that dove and the dove came back. Right. Somebody shout, he's always more. Always more. I believe where we're at right now, we're in that time where the dove has come back with the olive branch, with an anointing. Come on, somebody with the Prince of Peace in her mouth. Hallelujah. Even what has transpired, even in our nation over the last year and few months has been nothing but a transition of God's grace, a dispensation, amen, that he has opened and afforded us right before he returns again. Because, friend, we're approaching the next season, the third part of the release of the dove in Genesis 8, where the dove's about to be released one more time, but he's not coming back to the ark. Hallelujah. Because the Lord of judgment himself is coming in the clouds with a great shout. Hallelujah. And we're leaving the ark. I said we're about to leave the ark. But the dove's going to move one more time, but he's not coming back to the earth. Hallelujah. Because he's leaving in the temples. Amen. That he dwells in. Come on, somebody. And friend, if nothing else, we need to learn how to release the dove in this hour of judgment and realize that God has afforded us even in judgment mercy. This is a move of his that's last. Come on, somebody. Before he comes. Hallelujah. This is the year that you're going to see names of the well known, both politically, religiously, come on, somebody, and even famous that have mocked God's name on silver screens from Hollywood and Hollywood. I'm going to hold to the Hollywood. Come on, somebody. God says I'll be mocked no more. This is the year that God says I'm coming with my fire. Not just the fire of my move. Because in Scripture there's two fires, both Old and New Testament. There's the fire of His move, His Spirit, and there's a fire of His judgment. And my friend, I prophesy by the Spirit of the living God. Amen. In this year it begins. And God says, I'm sending two fires. I'm sending them together. I'm sending fires of judgment and fires of my move right before I return. Yeah. Hallelujah. Luke 3, 16. 
Uh, it's your neighbor said, if you believe John 3.16, you ought to believe Luke 3.16. Yeah. Okay. Luke 3.16, John the Baptist, they were thinking he was the Messiah. And he set them straight real quick. Right. That's what real preachers do. Yeah. I mm, don't you try to put me up nowhere and think I'm here. They can't receive that. That grieves them. John said, "There's." he said, look, there's one coming after me. The latches of whose sandals I ain't even worthy to unloose. I'll baptize you with water under repentance, but he's going to baptize you with Holy Ghost and fire. Hallelujah. But then he said, there's going in verses 17 be a separation. Yeah. of the wheat and the chaff. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And he is going to melt it with a fervent, unquenchable fire. Somebody shout, there it is, two fires. A fire of his move and a fire of judgment. And friend, just like in Noah's day in Genesis 8, it was a time of judgment, even death. But it was also a time of life and newness. Come on, somebody, for the olive leaf. That was a green leaf. Look at your neighbor said, 2018. Go green, go green. Go green. Yes, Lord. Psalms 52. David said in verses 18, he said, I'm like a green olive tree in the house of the Lord. It's so my green flourishing. Song of Solomon chapter 3 The Bible said in verse 7 Hallelujah Or Song of Solomon 1 Thank you Lord I believe it's verse 16 Solomon said our bed is green And then he talked about their house Being strong with woods of fur Somebody say a strong house is a green house Look at your neighbor say Welcome to the first church of the green house Green 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 something that's growing. Green something that's living. Green something. Come on, somebody that's planted in fertile soul. I've come to prophesy by the Spirit of God. You better make sure your bed is green. Solomon was talking about his bride to be. Amen. The Shumanite woman, which is nothing but a prophetic parallel to us, the church, and the bridegroom that's coming. That he's saying it's midnight. Go out to meet him. Amen. Matthew 25 and 6. And the bride is saying, or the bridegroom is saying, to his bride. You better have a green bed. Your relationship with me better be flourishing. It better be green. Because only can you have a strong house is when you got a green bed. That bed's a place of intimacy. And the bridegroom saying to his bride, these latter times you got to release my dove in your life. you got to receive my dove in your life because only he can bring a green olive plant. Only he can bring the green. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you. Yes. I know I've been all over this place. I've been in the floor. I've been back yonder. I've been there. And we've danced one side of the stage the other. We've rolled. We've shouted. We've danced. Past the guns fell off the floor. Rolled it himself. With you. Hallelujah. This morning, the Holy Ghost said, Don't you stand right here. Because I got to give them some meat. Somebody say, Like harvest. We got the meat. No bibs here this morning. Bottles of water, but not milk. Hallelujah. Look at his neighbor and say, That's why you've been bringing your tithe and your offering into his storehouse. Not so they can stay milk in the house, but some meat. Amen. Malachi 3 and 10. Because meat's for them that's strong. Come on, somebody. So their, amen, uh, senses have been exercised through discernment so they can tell between evil and good, between right and wrong. Come on. Hey, hey anybody here, Holy Ghost? Praise God. That's where we get. So in a time of judgment, he's releasing the dove and he's receiving the dove. But that third time he released the dove after the green came, the dove didn't come back. The water that had receded. Hallelujah. Amen. They were about to step out of the ark. I am preaching prophetically from this outline that's divine. God is saying stuff in the spirit. Hallelujah. We're in the time of the dove. Amen. With the olive leaf in his mouth. And he's calling us to that fresh fellowship, that green bed, that strong house. Amen. Get your 
himself right with God. Turn the raven loose and don't accept him back. Let him go. Let the foul spirit go. Let the foul, the bird go. Let it go. Let that stuff that's not a me go. And release the dove and receive him. And get things green again. Come alive in me by the spirit. Hallelujah. Because we're in the last release. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. We're in the last release. Yes, we are. And we're about to leave the ark. Yes, we are. You look at your neighbor and say, Noah left it with his family. God says, This year, I'm bringing judgment to many of your loved ones. But remember, Matthew 12 20, 21, the judgment's on the victory. He's bringing them to judgment. And God says, when the judgment begins, do not get in my way. Because some of them, the only way you're going to help them is not to help. Proverbs 19 and 19 said, a man of great wrath shall experience judgment. He's going to experience a man of great sin, in other words. And God says, if you help him, you'll have to help him again. Therefore, God says, stay out of my way. This is the year 18, and I'm telling you to let them become adults, not only of the flesh, but in the spirit. Stay out of my way, because if you deliver them, you're going to keep having to deliver them. But if you let me deliver them, you won't have to deliver them again. So if you stay quiet on that one, you're running behind. Show me. Yeah. Had a man in Tampa, Florida years ago. Brother Adam, he kept coming to order three nights at Revival Street. He'd cry and he'd stand in the gap for his children. And he'd call them children. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, it don't matter how old your kids get, they're still your children. Yeah. Yeah. But there comes a time somebody might like grow up. And sometimes some can't grow up because mom and daddy won't get out of the wheel on it. Well, he come up that third night and the Holy Ghost screamed at me. And before I could just take off and quote scriptures and pray for him, I said, Lord, I don't know why I'm feeling like that. I mean, it just felt just heavy. And so I looked at him and I said, Sir, how old are you children you keep coming to pray for? Them? He said, well, one's almost 40, another's about mid-40s. I said, these same ones you keep telling about getting in trouble with law and won't work and you have to pay everything for them and you always have to go get them. I said, what? I thought he was talking about teenagers or something like that to begin with. Boy, he was making it sound. And after I asked him that, I stepped back. I said, they don't need prayer. I said, God been trying to deliver them for some time, but it's you that keeps getting in the way. I said, you don't want to need prayer. He got a little heart tell on his face. But he finally accepted it. I said, you are delivering them from God. I know. Somebody shout, 18 is the year. God's bringing some to maturity. I'm talking about the spirit. We call it the time and the year of maturity when, hey man, a child turns 18. Come on, somebody shout this year turned 18 in the spirit for a reason. It's time for a growing up. And God said, I'm going to use judgment to get some of them growing up. Look at your neighbor and say, some of them about to grow right out of their bondage. But you gotta quit running there every time they fall. They're my baby. Okay, but quit treating them like they still a baby. Yeah. In about here, Holy Ghost. Come on. Quit letting your bank account be there. When they go sell what's theirs, 
and blow their money, let them sit in the dark. Amen. 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 Praise God. Yes. Amen. Come on. Get out of my way, says the Spirit of Truth. Yeah. And I'll set them free, and when I deliver them, they won't need delivering no more. If you keep delivering, you're going to keep on delivering. Somebody ought to lift your hand and say, Dove, Dove. I'll release you. I'll release you. I ain't going to hold on to you. I ain't going to hold on to you. Dove's trying to flap. He's trying to go. And we holding on to one of his feet. Oh. No, not that much. Oh, no, no. Come on, say, let him go. Let him go. Let him lie on you. Yeah. Let him come down and call on. Because by the fear of the Lord, a man will depart from his iniquity. Yes, Proverbs 16 and 7. Somebody say, by the fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord. Uh, mercy and truth will purge it. Yes, uh -huh. But the fear of the Lord will make him walk away from it. Yeah. 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 Somebody say, turn the dove loose. Turn the dove loose. Release the dove in this season of judgment. You're going to see judgment. There's something coming. I can't even describe. I, I just, I, there's, there's some horrific things coming to this earth and even in this nation. Holy Ghost not long ago had me so burdened over even professional sports arenas and places where people gather and I begin to sense a time of judgment. Something's going to happen. Holy Ghost told me to warn the church to pray now about the inclement weather that is coming and the judgment that is near. Anybody here, Holy Ghost? There's some that have mocked my name for years, saith the Lord on the silver screen. Even on their newscast, they've mocked me and they've defied many and turned many, even youth and young ones, even from pulpit have been turned away from truth that's in me. This year some of those I will remove. For in the time of judgment God delivered Noah and his house but he also destroyed others. Noah survived because he knew how to release the dead. Turn to Matthew 21. Matthew 21. Matthew 21 verse 12 and Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overturned or overthrew the tables of money changers somebody say in the seats of them that sold does they don't say there was a cage but if they were selling doves they had to be a cage somewhere and I can see in the theater in my mind doves locked up because what they were doing with these doves or these turtle doves is they were coming in and doing what Leviticus 14 says, Leviticus 15 talks about. They were offering two turtle doves, one for a sin offering and one for a burnt offering according to the law of Moses and what God had told them to do yearly. And that's what they were doing in the temple during this time, this season. Hallelujah. And uh, it was near Passover. And amen. And so they were all in there and they were merchandising the house of God. They were certain ones sitting around. Amen. Somebody say selling the dove. Selling the dove. Making money. Amen. All for this. And, and, and Jesus comes in and overthrows the tables. He's, can't you see the tables turning over? Uh, Oh, this don't look like a puny, uh, feministic looking feature Jesus that's been painted in Renaissance paintings for many, many long years ago. This this looks like a strong figure to come on somebody, male of a man uh, with holy indignation, uh, walking in his house, uh, picking up tables, uh, turning them over. Uh, the table is the place of meeting and eating. Uh, hey man, he says, I'm turning over. I'm about to turn over everything that you called meeting with me and that's not. I, I'm about to turn over everything thing that you called eating with me and it's not. Hallelujah. And he turns them tables over. Somebody shout, we need to turn in the table over Jesus. And come into the house and he's coming into his houses this year. And Jesus said, I'm about to come in my houses. Even denominations that I started that I worked in in their early beginnings. That man and his traditions has overtook a man with unclean spirits now at this time. He said, in this year I'm coming to reclaim houses that are mine, pulpits that are mine, denominations that are mine, 
I'm coming and I'm going to take my houses back. If you ever get in his way, he'll be removed. Because his fire is coming back. And if the fires of his judgment has to make that possible, then so be it, says the Lord. And he said unto them while he was turning tables over and cages. Can't you see doves all on the table in cages? The, the cages is turning over. And, and see the doves. See the doves, not the doves. But see the doves. They, look what they do. <laughs> they, they, they're flying on in the temple. Somebody shout, the dove got loose in the house. Somebody shout, it's time for the modern church. Amen. To release the dove back in the house. Hallelujah. Preacher, it's time to release the dove and put away your notes. Yes. Amen. 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 Churches, it's time to release the dove and put away our orders of service. Yeah. It's time to release the dove and put away our plans and our callings of assemblies. Look where that's got us. Oh, anybody here, Holy Ghost? Somebody shout, think but one way. The prophet in the kingdom of God. And the Bible said it in 1 Corinthians 12 and 7. I've given unto you the manifestation of the Spirit that you might profit with all. The only way souls can truly, amen, be converted. Come on, somebody, and be changed is through a releasing of the dove. The only way, come on, somebody can truly be delivered is if the dove gets loose in the house. I'm going to preach this one day with doves flying. I'm going to turn them loose in the church where I'm going to wait down at a big church. And I pray they can't catch none of them for about a month. I may do that. Where are we at? I'll check with the landlord. Every time you walk in, my God, there you go. I was in, I was in Alabama one time, northeast Alabama, uh, a few years ago, and it was cold. There was snow on the ground, and hallelujah. And I was preaching, and they accidentally left the door open. About two or three sparrows come in there. The whole time I preached, man. It's... <laughs> That's when I first got the idea. Sure, boy, I wish I had me some to. <laughs> Usually that's how it happens with me. I see stuff and eventually I start doing it. Three days ago, I looked at my, or two days ago, I looked at my wife. She had a basket made for a young girl in our community. Hey man, that's about to have a baby and I have a baby shower and my wife had her basket filled and she had one of them big bottles like I had last night. Ago. And it had different things and items all in the bottle. I looked at my wife because I was trying to urge her. I said, boy, I'd sure like to have me one of them. <laughs> She said, what? I said, yeah, I ain't seen myself preaching before. <laughs> Two days before I came here. <laughs> By the time I said it again last night, I was having me a big baby bottle, and then I remembered y'all had one. Yeah. <laughs> and then we preached it till we threw it on the altar and knocked the nipple out of it. Because <laughs> God was calling us off the nipple and to get back to the temple. <laughs> hey, I can't wait to get that in and put it on the <laughs> Y'all see Pastor Doug rolling down here. <laughs> Hallelujah, glory, Lord Jesus. Somebody's thinking, what's he ever going to get through? Is that all you can think about? <laughs> you missed it. I'm never trying to get started. <laughs> Just releasing the dove. Because Jesus said, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you've made it a den of thieves. Then verse 14, the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he Somebody shout his whip came before his wonders did. And if judgment begin at my house, says the Lord, what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel? First Peter 4, 17. This year, even in my house, says the Lord, judgment will come. I will remove some. I will cast out some. But then I will release my dove. My dove's going to be released in many houses. He's not been allowed to be released in for some 25 years. He will be released this year as I remove the religious that's been in my way. And shine. And wonders will follow my belt of truth. Somebody say wonders. Wonders. After whoopings. We got preachers that don't like the whip. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. No wonder they're no wonder. When Jesus removed all them religious folk. 
overturned their meeting tables. And the dove got released. Yes. And he said, my house to be called a house of prayer. Yeah. Meaning, the whole purpose of coming here is to fellowship with me, not just with one another. Yeah. Yeah. Look at your neighbors say, we live in a day of social media. Yeah. We, in many places, have made God's house nothing but a social gathering. Come on. Mm. And don't get me wrong, fellowship's important. The church and acts uh, fellowship and break bread. Uh, but every time they broke bread and fellowship, uh, it turned into a prayer meeting. Uh, Holy Ghost showed up. They couldn't even get together and eat without having church. <laughs> now we've turned the church into church of chicken. <laughs> That roost is still sitting. There's another one there. We got on the rooster last night. Hallelujah. Jesus tore all that up and cast all that up. Somebody said he got him crucified. Jesus would have preached like some of these preachers are preaching today. He'd have never went to the cross. Thank God. He come in with it. He come in turning over tables. And when he was doing that, the dove got released. The Holy Ghost told me, he said, all the sufferings you've endured for 25 and a half years, and don't get me wrong, that's not the message. It's not what Marvin's went through to be with Jesus. It's what Jesus went through to be with Marvin. Yeah. But he chose me, like I said last night, Isaiah 48 and 10, from a furnace of affliction. That's my covering of the Spirit. That's the authority I walk in. I didn't get it at a university. I got it at an adversity. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And it's seizing me for this moment. And God says, though at this hour, hallelujah, even seven months ago, I put something in you 12 years ago to do. And seven months ago, you began to do it. You planted that church that I told you to plant. Hallelujah. But you're still my prophet. Though I have called you to associate yourself with something local. Hey, Man, and create an atmosphere, a place where my dove can be released. Uh, he said, but I'll put a message in you that, that's of a prophet uh, and you will do both. Uh, you will pastor locally and you will travel globally and you will bring my dove back to my houses. Uh, hallelujah. I'm calling you in this time. Uh, hallelujah. In this second last phase of your ministry. Come on. Uh, anybody here? Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, hey, I'm about to be 45. Uh, anybody? Hallelujah. The first half of it. Uh, was God training me, amen, getting me ready for this hour. Now I've stepped into this dispensation, hallelujah, and it's time, amen, it's time, I hear the Holy Ghost saying it's time, it's time for my dove to be released. And he's bringing a bell of truth. He's bringing a wheel that wanders He's bringing maturity and correction. Ephesians 4.11, he's gave apostles, prophets. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You're watching out there in social media yeah. land. He still calls people to be apostles and prophets. Yes, yeah. Evangelists, pastors and teachers. Yes, yes, yes. People all times. That's Ephesians 4.11. How did God call you to be a prophet? Why? Well, how did He call you? To, I don't know why. All I know is many, many years ago, I didn't even know what a prophet was, and I kept hearing Him say, "You're my prophet. You're my prophet." And the denominationalism that I was associated with wouldn't allow that very office title to even be mentioned. They cast it down over and over, and said it can't be used among our ranks. It's no longer sociable and acceptable. Come on, somebody. Yet you can be an evangelist, and nobody questions. You can be a pastor, and there's some that are pastors that are not. I just like to interject that. Hallelujah. And you can be a teacher. You can be an evangelist. You can be a pastor. You can be a teacher. But you can't be, hey man, the beginning to, or something's wrong with you. Well, I want you to know the Holy Ghost hasn't stopped by your denominational headquarters and your religious institutions to ask you for permission whether or not He can still be the same God. He's always been. Be careful. Anybody here, Holy Ghost? Prophets ain't the those that talk about the future. Matter of fact, they talk more about the past than they do the future. God sends prophets to his own people.
people to his own house. Every ministry and every facet and every office and calling. Amen. Glory to God. And these five should involve soul winning and a burden for loss. But I'm telling you, the prophet of God, hallelujah, has a burden on his heart. Amen. For God's house, God's people, the lost sheep that's in his house. They're usually that pointer. They'll tell you stuff that others won't be able to tell you. That sometimes walk alone. Jesus didn't say you've killed the pastors, but he always told the Pharisees, you've killed the prophet. Sometimes they appear to be mean. Sometimes they appear to be too straightforward. Sometimes they're the Jude. Verse 24. They say with fear, pulling out fire. Even those that have their flesh spotted with the world and they hate it. Come on, somebody. And then there's others, verse 23, that make a difference using compassion. Both are needed. Both have their place. Anybody here, Holy Ghost. Oh, glory to God. We live in an hour where there's many instructors. Anybody out of here, Holy Ghost. Amen. But God said, I've got to raise up fathers. And if you're a real daddy, you know what it means. Sometimes you have to discipline when your heart breaks. I don't joy in having to speak some of the things he shows me. But just as Habakkuk the prophet said in chapter 1 verse 3, he said you show me things of iniquity and grievous things. Sometimes I see things I don't want to see because that's what a prophet does. They're also called a seer, an overseer. They they get to see God shows them things and I'm telling they some nights I wake up scared and burdened because of what's happening in the church for 25 and a half years I'd sit in churches waiting to get to the pulpit to preach in a revival or just sitting on the pew or sitting on the drum stool or trying to help or be a part and I sometimes would see things and I'd hear him say that ain't how it's to be done that's man's traditions they're causing my dove I'd hear him say to be Aged. He can't get loose. I'm teaching you, Marvin. Pay attention. Because the day's coming where I'm going to release to you a house. And I'm going to release your ministry into many houses to bring back in order the way I do it, the way I've had it. And son, you won't make people mad and that's with their traditions. Here Jesus told Pharisees, Matthew 15, 6, your traditions have made my commandments of none effect. You made my work powerless. No effects. Effects because of your traditions that you caged yourself up in. Somebody shout, it's time to overturn the table of our traditions. It's time to let a weeping Jesus come in the house again so we can see a wonder working Jesus manifest in the house again. It's time to release the dove. Yeah. Thank you, Father.